About a week or so ago, they announced that the first carbon credits in for livestock have been purchased. Um, and, and they're trying to celebrate that deal and show that this, this carbon market is actually going to happen. Um, and I know there's a lot of confusion around the carbon credits. And so I wanted to get into it a little bit about where the whole deal comes from. And this is the um, press release. Dairy Farmers of America purchases first verified carbon credits in livestock marketplace. And Dairy Farmers of America advertises themselves as a co-op. They say they have 11,000 different dairy farmers. What they are is just a gigantic corporation that kind of controls 11,000 different dairy farmers. Um, and one of their members decided to, uh, he gave his, um, he's fed his cows a feed additive, which supposedly reduced the methane in their burps. And um, he was able to verify this and create these carbon credits. And he sold those carbon credits to Dairy Farmers of America, which he is a member of and, and shareholder of. And so it's a company buying carbon credits from their own, uh, from their own shareholders, really. And if you go back to, you know, what's really driving all this, you go back to the article I wrote in December, it was called Attack on Farmers Ranchers. No one's talking about, I made a video about it. And here, if you look, um, in the, what I write, uh, if I, if, if it's underlined, that's a link. Uh, I still get questions about sources, but so if you click on this um, partnership for climate smart commodities, and that's what that's what the article was about. If you click on that, it's kind of I don't I couldn't get it to link to the whole thing. This just takes you to the first project. But if you go up here to these tabs and click overview, then you'll see the whole project. Oh, my computer's slow. And 3.01 billion dollars is what the USDA taxpayer dollars has taken without any elected official being involved, they've just taken that money and they've given it off to what down here is their lead partners. Um, and these are corporations and associations and organizations, um, media companies, schools, all ev pretty much all everything involved with agriculture, they're just throwing money at it to get it involved in this whole carbon uh, the carbon credit scheme, just really the main goal, if you read the article, is to get farmers and ranchers to um, monitor or measure their greenhouse gas emissions. And they're trying to build this system with different apps and technology, um, and they're using this $3 billion and throwing it at these, organ these corporations mainly um, to, to get that to happen. So if you go down here, these are your lead partners. And so if you go to Dairy Farmers of America and then click here to see details, it will take you to their whole plan and show you, go down here, approximate funding ceiling, $45 million. The federal government has taken $45 million taxpayer dollars and given it to Dairy Farmers of America is the largest milk supplier in the country. Um, and so, or the largest dairy supplier, I guess, is how I read that. Um, and so they have given it to the largest dairy or organ organization or corporation in the country. And so what this is, if you look up here in their short summary, and these all read like this, there, the, um, at least all of them that I've clicked on, there's 131 total. I haven't clicked on all of them, but they all say supports farmer and rancher implementation and monitoring of climate smart practices that reduce greenhouse gas emissions or sequester carbon. Um, so if you go back to your carbon credits, Dairy Farmers of America is trying to look like there's this new market, and this is what USDA wants. They want it to seem like, oh, there's this great new market. We have to start measuring our greenhouse gas emissions. That's what they want farmers and ranchers to think. There's this carbon market. We have to start measuring these things. Um, but the reality is Dairy Farmers of America got $45 million from the USDA. They've now purchased um, carbon credits, which I don't think they ever listed. I read that thing. I didn't see anything of what they paid for them, um, but they bought these carbon credits from their own member. Um, and so it's, it's really just moving money around, which is the whole thing's being propped up by taxpayer dollars. So really the public is funding it um, and they're trying to make it look like it's, it's something. But if you go into, go back to their press release and you wonder why, you know, another reason why they would be doing this, they actually list um, the food companies who have had challenge meeting, challenges meeting their scope three emissions reductions are able to make significant process progress, and ultimately we are able to mark progress. Now, they don't go into what 
scope three is, but I've talked about this in, it seems like every video now I'm saying scope three is part of an ESG report. And it is the way that the largest corporations push this ESG plan down throughout the supply chain. So Dairy Farmers of America is your largest milk supply or dairy supplier in the country. They're doing huge amount of business with the Targets and the Walmarts and a lot of these publicly traded grocery companies. Um, the publicly traded companies have what is called these these stakeholders, um, which are shareholders that are pushing ESG, telling their, their large investment firms that have bought their the largest shareholders in these companies, and they tell these companies that they have to push this ESG plan. Part of the ESG plan is scope three. What scope three is, you, you tell your suppliers that they have to push their ESG plan. And so Dairy Farmers of America has been told by the targets in the Walmarts of the world that they have to, um, part of their ES, through scope three, is they have to have an ESG plan and they have to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. And, and so that is where this, this carbon credit thing comes from, and they just put it out there plainly. And so if you look at the Dairy Farmers of America, this is their ESG um, report. They call it their social responsibility report, but in actuality, if you open it up here, we go environmental, social, and governance. That's what the whole this whole booklet is based on. Um, and ESG, Environmental Social Governance, that is a program developed by the United Nations and pushed by the United Nations. And the United Nations is where the entire whole idea was born that livestock are bad for the environment. Um, they, they put out this gigantic report um, called Livestock's Long Shadow. Before that, no one had talked about how damaging livestock are for the environment. The United Nations puts out this report to show how damaging agriculture is to the environment with, with the goal of controlling agriculture. And, and just the whole thing is all about control and how do we get control of these small farmers and ranchers. You go here, this is their environmental social governance page. And if you look at um, these main things, they look at economic, environmental, social, this is their graph of where they break down, how they're improving on all these things because they're being forced to by their, by their uh, suppliers. And it, here, you know, I, if you think I'm crazy talking about United Nations, here they state their sustainable development goals. Um, this is the same thing in, National Cattlemen's Beef Association has, um, but this one they just bell it out a little more. This is the United Nations little symbol, and they say we are proud to have long supported the United Nations 17 sustainability development goals. So they are just a good little soldier for the United Nations at the Dairy Farmers of America. And another part of ESG, which has been in the news some um, with the airlines, is this diversity, equity, inclusion. And this is the, another page in Dairy Farmers of America's um, their ESG report. And this is, um, if you're my age, I feel like you, when you grew up, you were taught to treat everyone as equals, you know, not, not focus on race or gender or those kind of things, just kind of the golden rule. Treat everyone how you want to be treated, and that comes to hiring and every other thing. Um, diversity, equity, inclusion is kind of the opposite of that, you know, where, where we were taught you don't really want to focus on race or skin color. That's what diversity, equity, inclusion, equity is focusing on skin color. And here's how they sort, kind of, they, they got everybody sorted out. If you want to think about the cattle business, um, there's somebody at the hiring gate there and they're sorting out uh, based on color and, and gender. Um, a lot of, t kind of the same way, the same way we sort our calves out. And, you know, here you have your ethnically, ethnically diverse, um, you know, female hires, ethnic racial minority groups. This is all how they how they sort their employees. Um, and I really like this picture they put in there because this guy here, he's realizing, um, you know, the goal the goal with uh, this DEI, if you want to go back to cattle, is to get rid of the Charlet bulls. Um, and this old guy, he's kind of realizing. I think his his days are numbered, and he's uh, he's headed for the coal pen. But um, that is, so that is who Dairy Farmers of America is. They are all bought in on this United Nations plan. And to go back, the United Nations is where the idea for livestock being bad for the environment comes from. And Dairy Farmers of America is also 
been given $45 million by the U.S. government to be a big part of this climate uh, solution, you know, this par partnership for climate projects. And if you're a cattle guy, you're probably thinking, um, you know, we always knew these dairy guys were nuts. But if you look back, um, if you go back to their ESG page, this is Dairy Farmers of America ESG, you can see their main go goals or main pillars, you might call them, are economic, environmental, and social. And so if you go, then go to National Cattlemen's Beef Association, this is their page, this is their ESG page, but they know that um, that, that term is getting kind of negative, so they're not gonna call it that, but if you look here, social, environmental, economic, you know, you go down through all their crap, and it is social, environmental, economic, National Cattlemen's Beef Association and their partners are all in on ESG. The reason is because Tyson Foods is all in on ESG. Tyson Foods' biggest shareholder is BlackRock. BlackRock is you know, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street are the investment firms that are really pushing this whole ESG movement into these corporations. National Cattlemen's Beef Association is all in. I'm going to be in uh, Black Hill Stock Show on February 1st. I'm going to be talking more about this. Um, come by, say hi, and then please share the video. The main thing, the main way we can do this, um, you know, Farm Journal, the big ag media corporations are not going to go against their corporate advertisers. This 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 uh, message is not going to get out there without small, um, without just organically grassroots messages. Um, and so, please share the video. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Stay tuned.